Wagwan. Welcome to the DIY Yadi channel. Welcome back if you've been here before. In this video, I'm doing a complete brake job on a 2006 Land Rover Range Rover. These are the tools we need a 22 millimeter to 16 millimeter, 7 millimeter um, Allen, a 6 millimeter Allen screwdriver, a 3 8 and a half inch wrench, and this is the vehicle. I always say before you start, you want to make sure your wheels are blocked. You know, I got my log blocking my wheel. All right? Okay. And put your park brakes on also. I'm on a slight incline, that's why I have the back wheel blocked. Okay, so I'll get the jack in place. And this is a truck, SUV. So on the SUV, I always want to put the jack on the subframe of the truck. That's the strongest part. The subframe is usually, you know, steel or cast iron. And it's the strongest part. So I have my um, jack stands. Whenever I'm jacking up a vehicle, getting it off the ground, I use my jack and my jack stands to secure the vehicle. I'll leave the jack in place along with the jack stand. Okay. Now I'm going to go and get the wheel off, which is where you use your 22 millimeter. If you um, have a lug wrench, then you won't need this. You know, it's your preference, whichever way you want to go about it faster for me so I use my impact wrench okay now the vehicle this vehicle is actually um, experiencing some noise when it breaks so it's not um, normally in these cars when the brakes go bad it, it sets off the uh, brake line brake lining light but the brake lining light isn't on but it's making a brake noise when the car breaks, like a rough noise. So there is definitely some issues with the brake going on there. Okay. So I'm my my plan is to uh, install the rotor and brake pads. Now these wheels, even though I got all the lugs off, they're hard to get off, being that the these wheels sit on a machine surface. So it's a tight fit. If you see that white line on the rotor, that's where the, the wheel sits onto. Okay. Now we're, that's what I'm doing here is I'm popping out what's called the um, dust covers, and those are for the caliper bolts. There's two of them. That's the top one, and there's a lower one. That's the lower one I'm trying to get right now. That's it there. And that's the basically like in a rubber um, enclosed, you know, tube. And you pop that out from the top of the tube. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is to remove the shim, or some people call it a shim. Some people call it an anti-rattle clip. You know. So use my pry bar, and I'm going to pry against it pushing on the rotor and then I just use my pliers to hold it sometime you know it, it'll flip away alright got that out of the way so now I'm gonna use my seven millimeter to pull the uh, caliper bolts so there's number two if I remove the cap so there's a top bolt and a bottom bolt Make sure you get your tool right on the head of the bolt. Because if you don't, sometimes you know it'll slip. So and, uh, you don't want to strip your bolts out. I'm actually trying to get a better uh, position. Get the tool in place. Make sure the tool is in the bolt all the way. Sometimes. Um, some of these bolts, you know, they some people put like a Loctite on them, so it's a little harder to pull. You know, you never know what the person before you who worked on the car did. You know, so you just got to take your time and pull it the best possible. 
try not to strip or break anything. This is my 3 8 ratchet, 3 8 drive ratchet with my 7 millimeter um, Allen key. Once I loosen this, you're gonna see um, while I'm while I'm loosening it, I try to pull on the bolt. While I'm loosening, I try to pull on the bolt, pull it out. See that bolt just stuck out. Okay. So now the next thing we're gonna do is take the caliper off, and this rotor has like a ridge on it. So what you want to do is get like a screwdriver or something, and put insert right in there, and pry against the rotor and the caliper to make some space that way the rotor will, I'm sorry the caliper will come right off will pop right off there we go all right job isn't isn't hard you know it's just certain things you little tricks you have to know to get certain things moving faster I'm also popping the um, brake hose out of that holding area just get a little more um, room to move my caliper around all right. Now the next thing is this um, brake bracket, and the brake bracket has two 16 millimeter um, bolts. So I'm going to get my 16 millimeter socket and get those two bolts removed, the top and the bottom. Okay. So 16 millimeter. Working, work. I'm a right-hander, and I'm working with my left hand, holding the camera with the right. So it's a little um, awkward for me. And these bolts, they have Loctite on them, you know. Which these you would expect to have Loctite because you know they they um, absorb a lot of impact. A lot of they have to stay tight, being that these brakes, you know. High speeds, low speeds. You want to make sure your brakes stay intact. Okay, so that's that's the brake um, bracket. Got that removed. So now, after this, I'm gonna have to remove that little screw right there. That's what holds the rotor. That holds the rotor to the um, to the wheel bearing, and that's a six millimeter Allen. Okay, so we're going to get that pulled. And usually these aren't on there too tight, but sometimes, depending on you know how uh, old the car is, how long it's been sitting, and all of that, sometimes you'll have an issue getting that out of there. Okay. Now this rotor is on there pretty tight, so I'm using a hammer break it loose. Okay, see so it just pop loose. So normally what you know I would recommend is on the lug bolts put the lug put the lug bolts on the onto the lugs. That way if you accidentally hit the um the lug nut, put the lug nuts onto the lug bolts. If you accidentally hit it, you won't damage the lugs. Uh, I've been doing this for a while, so I, I, I'm, you know, I'll take a chance, but I don't really recommend doing it that way. All right, so now we're gonna get our rotors cleaned up. You know, these rotors they usually, not always, they usually have like an oily film on them to keep them from rusting you know because you know these these rotors are shipped from different places so they try to keep them you know from could be in a damp shipping area where it could get rust so they put this this kind of um, oil on there to protect it from rusting okay, so now putting in the new rotor you, you want to make sure that that hole that that holds the rotor to the bearing is lined up. All right, so make sure 
it only goes that one way right or else you won't be able to put the screw in it now we're going to tighten down that screw get that screw nice and tight make sure it holds the rotor secure in place and um, there is a suggestion to do this with a torque you know like they give you the information for a torque wrench but you know you can you can pretty much do this hand tight because the um, the, the wheel is going to go on over top of this so once you tighten down the wheel the, the rotor isn't going anywhere you know so just got it nice and stug, snug and that's good enough all right now we're going to get our brake bracket back on I remember that's the two 16 millimeter bolts and these brake bracket bolts they have um, Loctite on them so you know they won't if you try to screw them in all the way by hand they won't you can just get them started then you'll have to use your wrench or the impact you know whichever I'm using my impact so like I said um, makes the job a little faster but use whatever tools you have you know doesn't have to be an impact just use what you have got those nice and tight alright so now I'm gonna replace my um, brake pads okay, the old ones out I'm gonna need my um, brake caliper tool or brake caliper uh, piston compression tool you can get a tool like this at most um, auto parts supply stores or anywhere any any store that sells you know automotive automotive parts okay so when you get the piston compressed and the reason you get the you compress the piston is the piston has to be pushed in in order for the new brakes to go in place you know because as the brakes wear the brake material wears the piston comes out you know further and further so we have to push these pistons back in now what you have to remember also is to pay attention to your um, brake reservoir because you know the reservoir you can have fluid coming back out of the reservoir depending on how much fluid is in the reservoir okay so like you can see there there's some fluid coming out so you want to make sure depending on where you're working you have something under the car you know to catch that fluid if you're working in an area where you don't want to make a mess okay let me show you under the car you can see the fluid draining down All right. so let's keep that in mind to put something under there if you're working in an area where you know you don't want to make a mess or you don't want to damage the floor or whatever okay so you turn this until you know you can feel it visit you know physically stop don't torque down on it just snug it then back it off and remove the tool okay got a tool removed now you want to pop that brake the inner brake pad out and clean any any dirt or whatever that might be in there dirt or rust get new brake pad and install that got to make sure these little clips go inside the caliper inside the um, piston you want to squash them together and make sure they they go up in that piston tight that's what holds the um, brake pad from you know rattling around while you drive gives it a nice secure fit all right that was the inner now this is the outer one all right and it's, it's a good practice to touch some grease on on the ends of the brake um, pads when you're installing them all right so you get them in place also sometimes on on some of these cars 
you'll need to clean up the, the contact surfaces on, for the um, brake pads on the brake caliper um, brake caliper bracket you know use a little sandpaper and you know just uh, clean up the contact areas okay so now I'm gonna get my um, caliper bolts tightened and that's the seven millimeter Allen to tighten those down get those nice and snug and also those bolt too is a good practice to um, you know clean them up and put a little bit of grease on them keep them moving nice and smooth here I'm popping my uh, brake hose back in place uh, I remember I would pulled that apart to get some more movement on my brake hose with a caliper so I don't damage that brake line alright I'm double checking my um, caliper bolts, making sure they're snug. Okay, so now that's good. I gotta get my um, this is my anti rattle clip, and these are the dust covers. Get the upper and lower dust covers back in place, or dust caps, whatever you know, it's just to call them. Same thing. Now I'm gonna snap the anti-rattle clip back in place and this keeps the help to keep the caliper from rattling around when you drive also okay so you snap that in make sure the top and bottom you know little arms are in place now what I do I take something and I tap on it like that you know make sure it's locked in firmly Just to double check, make sure everything is tight. All right. Now the next thing, once I'm done, I always pump my brakes up. You know, pump the brake up at least four times. You know, don't press hard until you pump at least two, at least two pumps. And on the third pump, you can push down. You know, a little harder to make sure it's nice and tight. Once the brake pedal is nice and tight. Put on the wheel. Oh, I forgot to mention, I lost some footage. So this is just a quick showing of where the brake, the new brake um, warning sensor, is going to go popped into the brake pad. So the only difference on this car now is the rear on the rear brakes. The only difference is this is the rear rotor, and the only difference on the rear doing the rear brakes on this car from the front is that the rear rotor has the um, park brake or emergency brake built into the rotor okay so I'm about to pop the rotor off so you can see that see inside of here is the that's the park brake okay so the the um, park brake is only for when you're parking okay the to do the, the um, brake pads and everything it's the same exact job as doing the front so I didn't even bother to show you that being that it's the same exact thing okay so I'm gonna get the new uh, rotor this is the rear remember so make sure your, your holes are lined up there are two holes on this rear rotor one is for the brake park brake adjust the other one is the bolt that holds the rotor to the bearing Right, so get that back on nice and tight and on that second hole like I said that second hole is for the park brake adjust these two holes won't won't line up with each other in other words the screw won't go in the dust and the adjustment hole and the adjustment hole won't line up with the school the screw to hold it okay so there's a there's a cap that covers that uh, um, park brake adjuster so I pop that cap out and I'm going to reuse it for this new rotor okay so that's just a cap that goes in there the park brake does generate dust over time so that little cap also helps the dust from getting into the rim of the car alright so the job is done and a reminder that on this car the front left has the brake um, warning sensor and the 
rear right okay so those are the sensors you'd replace hope this video helped you bless up